Hello and welcome to Aggregate, an open source Python package for solving actuarial problems with aggregate probability distributions. And in today's session, we're going to be describing how you can create an aggregate from a limits profile. This is a common thing that happens in uh, reinsurance where different um, policies that underlie a treaty have different layers and attachments and you're trying to figure out the overall distribution to your treaty. So as always, uh, let's set up our graphics and let's import uh, build and uh, QD from uh, aggregate. And then uh, we'll go to the test suite. And uh, last time when we were looking at mixtures, uh, they were in section G. So here you remember we were using a sort of vectorized notation to create a mixed severity distribution. So this uh, little piece of code here created a log normal with a mean of 10, a variety of CVs, and a variety of different weights. And that was uh, one claim. And what we're going to do uh, now in this section is look at other variables that can be uh, vectorized in the Bethel specification, and in particular, the, the limits piece here. So in these examples, all the policies had a 50x of zero um, uh, limit. And, and now I want to uh, vectorize that and uh, see how we can vary the limits and attachments. So let's actually just build those so we can look at the individual uh, components and discuss them as we go through. So the first one here is a uh, simple uh, one claim, and it's asking for limit profile of uh, 1, 5, 10, and 20 excess of zero. So you're thinking that you've got some policies, that, and it could be in millions or whatever, uh, you know, uh, a policy limit of 1, 5, 10, and 20. Uh, the severity for all of them is is 10x of uh, 1.2. So actually, these uh, the first two are going to be basically trapped at a, a million, uh, at 1 and 5. This will have a severity very close to 10, but this one will have the, the 20 policy limit would have a little bit of room to kind of express itself. Now, we've asked for one claim, and the way this is going to be interpreted is it's we'll, we'll come to how we can vary the exposure in the next section, but at the moment, it's going to be one claim for each of these limit bands. So overall, we're going to have a frequency of four. Uh, we're going to have a severity that averages out to about five. And so the ag aggregate loss is going to be uh, about 20. We're failing validation here as usual because the bucket size is slightly too small. You see the bucket size is, is, is 10, 20, 24 is, 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 uh, is, a, is a bit too small here. Um, if we look at the picture, we see though what's going on. So it's easiest to see what's going on focusing on the log density here. Um, so this uh, orange line is the log severity. And you can see this is your limit uh, at 1, 5, 10 and 20. So those are, are where you have a, a limit loss. And then when you don't have a limit loss, you've got the probability distribution that's shown with the orange. And then the blue line is, is your aggregate. And because you've got a very low claim count, and because some of these limits are very low relative to the average loss, it's very likely that you just get limit claims. And that accounts for all the spikes that you see here. So this is various different combinations of, of limit losses. So that's one example where we've got everything excess the same uh, attachment point. Um, the next one, number two here, we've got uh, varying attachment points. So we've got um, uh, limits of 10, 20, 50, and 100, excess of two ground up, uh, excess of 0 and 50, and then excess 50, 100. So you read it in pairs. This is going to give me uh, five claims each for 10x of 0. 20x of 0, 50x of 50, and 100x of 100. And I'm going to have a severity with a mean of 10 and a coefficient of variation of 2, and no variation in the claim count, the fixed claim count. So overall, again, 20 claims because it's 5 per each band. Um, severity and so forth uh, worked out as shown here. Um, again, looking at the log density plot, uh, you can see the limit losses. So this is 10, 20, 50, and 100, the spikes. But now in this case, we've got enough uh, claims that the aggregate's coming out uh, looking reasonably smooth overall. And then a third example, you might wonder, well, how do I do unlimited? Uh, you can use the keyword inf. So in this case, we've got uh, four uh, policies with, um, uh, uh, we've got four policies, each with 10 claims. 
and the uh, limits are unlimited ground up, so unlimited x of 0, 10x of 0, unlimited x of a deductible of 5, and 10x of 5. And you can see looking at the severities um, that uh, you've, you, that's where you've got your, your 10 limit as the, the spike there. The validation here coming out not unreasonable, and we're seeing really a, a you know bigger uh, error on the aggregate. And this little uh, component down here is uh, an indication that the probabilities have kind of wrapped around. The fast Fourier transform has this wrapping uh, 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 feature. Well, not a feature; it's just the way the calculations work. And that really, that piece of probability there should sort of be on the, the right hand side here. It's a sign that our, our bucket size. Um, is uh, is too small. So what we should do here is um, just let's experiment and figure out what the, the right bucket size should be. So we can build um, this, any of these distributions that are shown here, you can build uh, anything out of the knowledge by calling build and just giving it the name of the distribution. So this one is called limits 03. Okay, so uh, if we do that and let's just... Uh, Look at the diagnostics you can see that's the same as what we got up here it's being built with a bucket size of uh, 16. Um, if you want to check your program uh, the decal program that created it uh, that's available as a element um, p program here we'll, we'll show you the program that created the uh, that, that underlies this uh, uh, aggregate and then let's run we saw in a, a previous um, uh, we saw in a, a previous video that we've got this function aggregate um error analysis and we want to run that with uh, 16 buckets <clears throat> and let's look and see whether so this column here is our relative uh, error in the mean the first column is the theoretical mean it's it's 319.69 the estimated mean here is uh as as shown and this is the absolute error and the relative error so the lowest relative error here is coming out at point uh, 03120, so this is an eighth, a sixteenth, it's a thirty-second. So that's suggesting that we should update A with a balance uh, with a bucket size of uh, one over thirty-two. So let's do that and then look at the diagnostics, and that's perfect. Okay, so we see a slightly larger um, distribution, a slightly larger error in the mean for the aggregate than the severity but not uh, materially and if we look at um, the plot now for this what we should see is we've gotten rid of that wrapping that was happening on the left hand side because we've got more space for the distribution to express itself on the right hand side so that explains how to um, create a, a limits uh, a, a limit profile except I haven't really discussed um, dealing with the uh, premium uh, component. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and do that. I just want to grab one of these. Let's grab this one here. Copy this. And let's edit this to uh, include some premium. Okay, so I want to include a range of premiums. Uh, let's call this AL3P. And let's say we want to have um, premium distribution or, or let yeah premium distribution of um so let's see we've got 300 here from 40 so let's say we've got um a thousand of premium in the first bucket which is unlimited x of zero and then we've got maybe 800 of premium in the second bucket uh we've got 500 of premium in the third bucket and uh 200 of premium in the fourth bucket so premium and then let's say the loss ratios let's say the first bucket is written at an 80 percent loss ratio maybe a 70 or uh, maybe an 85 high loss ratio because it's lower uh, risk because we've got the limit on there uh, and then with the deductible maybe it's written at a, a 75 and then maybe an 80 again at uh, the uh, 10x of uh, the 10x of 5. Okay, so uh, that's going to be our new exposure clause. And then this is going to be our limits clause and our severity clause. And then let's uh, put in uh, mixed um, gamma 0.25 so we make the uh, frequency a little more interesting. 
and let's uh, run that. Okay, so now we're seeing uh, frequency 253. We're getting 2015 uh, units of loss coming out of this, validating uh, perfectly uh, with a bucket size of, of an eighth. And uh, if we just plot that, we can see uh, how that looks. It should look pretty, pretty nice and, and symmetrical. We've got enough claim counts that everything is, uh, is smoothing out. We're getting a nice smooth distribution and we've got no issues uh, with wrapping on the left hand side. So this syntax here is showing you how you can put in your limit profile. Often when you're doing a reinsurance pricing, you'll have a, an exhibit which will show, okay, what is the limits profile? And it will be expressed by premium, by limit band, uh, with potentially either the same loss ratio across all the limits, or maybe you've, you've decided to vary the limit uh, by band. And you can essentially uh, type that in here into your decal. So this is you know a bunch of attachments, a bunch of limits, a bunch of premium, and a bunch of loss ratios. Hopefully you can see how that would link quite nicely to an underlying exposure spreadsheet. And then this would allow you to model out the distribution of aggregate losses from that treaty, which you could then move along to, if you wanted to put a sliding scale commission or a swing or a aggregate deductible or other variable feature on it and value that, you can do that very easily from here. And we'll discuss uh, how to price those things in a coming video. Thank you.